no single uh, passive component is perfect. It isn't a world full of imperfections and every material employed in those passive components affects uh, the sound signature of this passive component. We listen to all these 60 plus pairs of capacitors in a controlled environment. Everything was kept equal, it's the same system. All the capacitors were tested in the same DAC3. Nothing was changed in the due course of the recording. We recorded all the capacitors in three sessions. Before anything was recorded, we actually checked for correct phasing of each and every capacitor and what one here, they're all phased to be sounding in sort of one optimal direction. I think it's important to mention as well, the sound changed pretty much significantly across all the capacitors, but some capacitors sounded more alike rather than different, and some capacitors sounded very different, but some groups, in some groups, there was less variance in the sound signature of, of different capacitors. This group contained capacitors that had a very similar materials employed inside those capacitors. So not a single capacitor sounded alike. They sounded similar, but not exactly the same. So the sound character changes, despite all the capacitors having the same sort of nominal capacitance. Some pundits are going to tell me, oh, well, you need to measure this, you need to measure that. It's ultimately not the physical parameters that we can measure. There are a lot of factors that are not explained and one of those would be uh, the usage of different materials. This is a very important aspect because I think that was actually the main driver that would explain the differences uh, in sound of these capacitors. I'm not saying that all uh, capacitors uh, should sound the same. They can't sound the same. They were made by different people with different processes using different materials. So how can all capacitors sound the same? They can't sound the same. In my book, it's usually the material that is the main factor that drives the, the quality or differences in the, in the sound. And we can conclude or deduct from what we hear how a particular material affects the sound of a capacitor. For example, copper versus silver. Everybody sort of got the idea that there is significant difference between the copper foil and the silver foil capacitors. But it's not just the, the electrode material that affects th that sound, but also what goes with it. So we can have an, a silver foil capacitor, say using the paper as a dielectric and using oil to dampen the sound. And it will be sounding very different from just, say, a silver with polypropylene or some other dielectric. What one can clearly hear is that Every material or combination of materials results in some sort of different sound. Uh, it may be less audible uh, on the recording than in the real room, but still there is a difference. The question is which combination results in more optimum sound quality. The better capacitor is always going to be the one that harmonizes better with the rest of the system. The winding technique the leads and have all these other factors that make up the capacitor, but also this, the, the environment in which the capacitor is going to be played or employed in makes a difference. Apart from that, there's also a phasing and directionality of this capacitor that makes a difference. So um, I do like the, the classic combination of aluminum foil, paper and oil. The other one that is also a very nice combination is usually the copper foil, paper and oil. That's also a, a great combination. The combination of silver with paper and oil is also not bad, but is driven by the electrode material of silver, copper or aluminum. If one understands which material is in there and how each material affects the sound, one starts to get the idea. The sound of paper is beneficial for the most natural sort of harmonic presentation. Also the use of oil or dry sort of capacitors also affects the, the smoothness of the sound to, to a great extent. So uh, without oil and with oil, uh, the sound changes significantly. But not only the, the, the dielectric, the, the electrode material, the, the fill material, the, the tightness of the, uh, of the capacitor, but also the shell and the leads uh, affect the sound quality. The leads, whether they're made from copper 
or sort of silver plated or, or s pure silver. And then also the outer shell, so the, the tubing in which the capacitor sits has also uh, an effect on the way the capacitor sounds. So for example, the paper tubing never had a such a full bodied sound as the copper casing. And the aluminum casing has the lightest sort of the most light bodied sound of them all. In order to have sort of ideal balance, one needs to balance all these materials that I just mentioned. It's how they're blended together. That in the end gives you the balanced and harmonic sound. My least preferred uh, combination was where actually we have polypropylene. To me, all these polypropylene metallized uh, films tend to have some sort of higher frequency noise and that that sort of noise annoys me if i have it in the sound i prefer polyester for that reason uh, it's it's more taming the higher frequency sort of uh, imperfections out of all the uh, dielectrics my preference would be for paper so that is the most natural material there is and it's also coincides with the fact that it's the most natural sounding as well capacitors that i like the least had also something being metallized on top of the leads that applies to silver plated copper leads or gold plated copper leads i also was not very fond of the sound of the twist tightly twisted copper leads it tames the dynamic behavior of that sound whether this adds additional resistance or whatever it does when you have two copper leads and they're twisted. I prefer just a single lead instead of anything being twisted. Out of all the casings, I think the plastic casing sounded the worst, uh, in my opinion. My most preferred, as I stated before, was the copper casing followed by the paper casing uh, and then followed by aluminum casing. Having said this, with all my preferences, it's not about the ones that I always prefer. It's a combination of harmony between the combination of these materials. Most of the materials affect the tonal balance of the sound. And the combination of these affect at the end the, the sound signature of that passive component. That needs to be taken into account if one is uh, uh, serious about building audio equipment that reproduces music at its highest potential.